Hey guys, so I'm out here in the garden and I thought I'd share a few things with you. So first off, you're looking at some flowering kale that I planted first week of July after pulling out some plants that were done. Things that I planted super early spring. Now for the past three gardening seasons, I've really enjoyed growing flowering kale, pumpkins and gourds, things to use for fall decorating. And in the past, I've shared several videos on growing flowering kale from seed. I usually will grow them in little nursery pots. You can actually go back and check Check out those videos if you want because the process of growing flowering kale is going to be the same whether you are doing them in little pots or in your backyard gardens now this year I've decided to plant the seeds in my garden containers because I have drip irrigation already installed and so the watering is going to happen every day happen automatically and that's just so much easier for me now this year I wanted to share with you something that I'm doing differently. You can see I've covered it with some garden fabric, hoping to protect them from pests, from cabbage worms really. So in the past, I've almost had to check on the plants daily, picking off cabbage worms. If you give it a day or so, uh, they will be full of holes and just look terrible and you'll have to throw out your plants. And that is not something you wanna do. I've done it before and it really is kind of a pain um, and so it's hard to stay on top of the pests eating your plants and so this year I wanted to make it easy on myself cover the plants see if that really makes a difference and I want to share that with you today so after planting the kale seeds, I waited to make sure that they germinated, that my seeds were good, and then I placed one of these wooden shims that I already had on hand in each corner around the kill. And if you don't have something like this, you can use free tree branches from your yard, just whatever you have. And then I placed a piece of garden fabric over the entire thing and secured it to my container with these metal binder clips. Now this garden fabric I actually bought from Amazon about three years ago and I've used it every year to protect my plants from pests and things. It actually comes in a really big piece and you just kind of cut off what you need to kind of fit uh, what you want to cover in the garden. And if I find a link on Amazon, if they still carry it, I will place that in the video description below. And I actually when I first purchased it, I'd done a video on, I think I was covering my lettuce and so, uh, that video may be helpful if you want to go back and check that out. So this has been covered for over a month. I've actually not looked underneath it the whole time, which is really not ideal. But for this, I really wanted to see if I could cover it and not really have to, you know, check on it often and my plants be okay. But really you should actually check on your plants, you know, every few days to make sure that nothing has gotten under here and is munching on your plants. Now I have passed by this container and you can kind of see through the fabric and so I can see that my plants have been growing that the kill leaves are getting larger but as far as um, you know seeing if pests are eating on the plant you cannot see that um, but it does allow for you know rain and sun to pass through so your plants are getting what they need so now that the fabric is off, the kill is uncovered, just at first glance over, everything is actually looking really good. I'm kind of really surprised that I have not looked under this or checked it or done anything to it for over a month now. And there is just very minor damage, a few little holes here or there, except for one plant over in the corner. It does look like it has multiple holes in some of its leaves. So I'll make sure to look at that plant really closely. And also, while I have it uncovered, look at all the rest of the plants before I get it covered back up. So I'm gonna go and take a closer look. Now when you're checking your plants, you want to make sure to check the top side of the leaves as well as underneath. And also those center leaves, the center of the plants, the little worms like to hide. And also cabbage worms are that green color. And so they will blend into the color of the kill leaves. So sometimes they are, you know, easy to miss, easy to pass over. And so make sure you're checking your plants really well before you cover them back up. 
So um, looking over these, guys, I'm really not seeing anything. I'm actually really surprised that I see holes in the leaves, but no pests. And so I'm just going to keep a closer eye on these in the coming days. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and get these covered back up. Now moving on to another container. Now down here in this container, again, first week of July, I planted some little miniature pumpkins and gourds. So I had seeds left over from last year, seeds from the MI Gardener that I ordered. They were Jack B. Little pumpkins, little miniature orange pumpkins, as well as a cornucopia gourd mix. So a mix of different little miniature gourds in different colors and shapes. Both of those did really well, and I was able to use them in a project I put together a fall container kind of tucked some of those in I shared a video on it if you want to go back and check it out I think it turned out great and I'm also growing some of the white little miniature pumpkins new to me this year they're called baby boo and I just thought they were so cute and it'll be fun to grow both the white and the orange miniature pumpkins and use those for fall decorating now as the plants grow, I'll work the vines up a trellis and grow them vertically. When you're growing in containers or a small space, you want to grow vertically. You can fit more in a small space. And growing these smaller varieties, these miniature varieties, the plants don't get as big it seems. So it really is a good choice to grow uh, these miniature varieties if you have a small space or are growing in containers. So next in this container, next to my parsnips, I planted, you guessed it, more pumpkins and gourds. And uh, this right here in front is seeds from Botanical Interest. These are sugar pie pumpkins. And so these pumpkins are bigger than your miniature ones, but still much smaller than the larger varieties, your more carving type pumpkins. And then back here I planted a few of these daisy gourds and it's another gourd mix. And so I'm really excited to see how they do compared to the miniature gourds that I grew last year. And then while we're at it, we might as well take a look at the parsnips. They are looking fantastic. These are called the All-American Parsnips Seeds from Botanical Interests. And guys, I thought they were a dud. They took so long to kind of get going, slow to germinate. Then I found out later, because it's my first time growing these, that that is normal for parsnips. So these are looking great. They've probably been growing now for over 100 days, so technically, I can harvest these. You usually harvest them around 120 days, but you can actually leave them in the ground for longer. And a lot of people say if you wait to harvest them in the fall or late fall when you're getting cooler temperatures, they develop a sweeter flavor. So I think I'm going to let them grow a little longer, get a little sweeter, get a little bit bigger. So uh, that's your little update. So guys, here we are back at the covered kale where we started. So I hope you like seeing this garden update. If you'd like to see more of my gardening videos, you can check out these videos now. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you later. Bye.